Hello, and how the hell are you? I'm just gonna finish putting this liquid white on, and then we'll begin. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it. Okay, please don't tell anyone about that happy accident. Otherwise, certain parties are gonna beat the devil out of me. Anyways, I'm gonna go into some phthalo blue. My last painting, we did a winter scene, right? Well, it is still winter where I am, and honestly, I'm getting kind of tired of it, and I, I'm not, and I'm just looking forward to spring. I cannot stand the cold weather anymore. I never could. I'm a spring, summer type of guy, you know? So I'm gonna use my X strokes here, phthalo blue once again, really, really fast. Just use these extra strokes, gonna work myself all the way down. And then, you know, the, today I also thought it would be cool because I always see it every spring and it pop up. It's really pretty. Those, uh, what do you call it? Those pink dogwood cherry blossoms. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what their kind of trees. Uh, yeah, well, anyways, you know what I'm talking about. You see them all the time too. I used to have one right in front of my house. So fond of these trees, I don't even know the freaking name of them. But whatever, we're gonna, I don't know what to call them, I just know I want to paint them, so you'll see. Sorry. Little, uh, little on edge about the way this video started. All right. Today I'm using a, something a little bit smaller, 16 by 20. When you do a, um, a painting and have the canvas vertically, don't need so much. Or at least for this one. Just gonna make that a little even up there. Okay. And I'm gonna definitely have some water today, so uh, so we'll pull, start from the bottom, work our way in. Actually, I forgot. I'm gonna go into a tiny bit of sap green. At least it's not too late. Put that mix with the pale blue. Just distinguish a little bit more from the water in the sky. There we go. I don't need a sheen in the middle today because uh, I think if all works out, I'll put a waterfall somewhere down here. Maybe a little bit more over here to get it a little darker. Yeah. really want some dark color in the middle there if I have that waterfall and you'll see why later. Okay. All right, just put the palette down for a second. Get off some of the, uh, the excess paint off my brush. I'm just gonna use a paper towel. That should be good enough for now. Let's just get rid of the brush strokes here. Just gonna get rid of some of them. Okay, not fast. That's what we got. I do have multiple brushes, so I really only need to get some of the paint off here as much as possible. Don't necessarily have to go into my thinner right now. Because the color I'm going to use for this brush uh, later on, I'm going to have some grassy hills maybe. Blue is not going to hurt it. All right. Anyways, so 
since this is a uh, spring scene, I do not want too many uh, distinguishing clouds. I just want, I, I want that one of those nice blue skies where it's like, you just almost can't see any clouds. There's barely any in the sky. So I'm gonna make some, just some stringy ones. And this is, these are the easiest clouds to make. If you can't make clouds, just start off with these. Just, just back and forth like this. That's all you gotta do. Very easy, very simple. Easier than those other ones we usually make. And that's really all I want. No need to fluff them or anything. They're far away, they're, they're stringy. That's what I want. Okay, I'm just gonna wash the brush off. And there we go. Now, where do we want the first set of trees? I'm going to put some in the background here, probably. And just, eh, maybe. You know what? Before we continue, I'm just going to I'm just going to connect uh, the sky and the water a little bit more. Hold on. I don't want it. it. Doesn't need to be too distinguished there. A lot of this painting today is going to be. A lot, a lot of foreground, so we're, we're really not going to need uh, too much background. I made that happy little accident just now because that's what I'm used to doing. If you do paintings like this, I'm sure you are too. You usually have this little misty area here, but today we don't really need it. Now, let's uh, set these trees by um, these background trees first by actually making them before I make a ground for them to, to stay on, I think. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Three hours later. Oh, maybe, maybe I should do the ground first. I know we work from what's furthest back towards, but they're kind of in the same spot. So maybe... I'll, I'll fix a place for them to stand first. So, where's that, where's that brush? Okay, go into that sap green now. Just pull it out. Just push that brush in. Tap and push. It's a good way to load the paint for grassy areas. And it'll just go like this. Now I'm gonna add a touch of blue to there. Make it a little darker. And some alizarin and crimson as well. Should have done that first. Being a little hasty today. Pretty sure it'll still work out. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. Ooh. Okay, everyone, sorry about that. The almighty easel isn't so mighty. Now, where were we? Yeah, we're going to make this grassy area. A bit more crimson. 
I keep that color dark, you know? That just goes along there. Okay. Now, I'm going to come back later and I'll do the highlights. Cannot have grass without highlights, right? Okay. Put that down a sec. And now, for some detail, where do we want the trees over here? Got to thin out the Van Dyke brown. Just get a really watery like ink. And if it even starts running down the palette, that's okay too. Right. How about right here? Wherever you think this tree should be, that's where it should be. Make it a little thicker there. A little more thinner. I actually don't use paint thinner per se. I use something special. Oh, by the way, last video I used baby oil. Uh, apparently that was a happy little accident and I'm not supposed to do that. You hear different things within the community, but oddly enough, worked out okay. But just to conserve my brushes, I guess I'm not gonna be using it anymore. But as for what I do use, that's gonna be a video for another time. It's not really paint thinner, it's more like a, an essential oil. One big jar of essential oil. Which is a lot safer to use considering I am working indoors. So for those of you who are using an actual chemical, uh, be careful, be safe. And, you know, make sure you have good ventilation. Otherwise, your paintings might come out a little too psychedelic. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine, but that might not be good for your health. Okay. You know, without any leaves or anything, this looks like a fall painting. That's not what we're doing today. A lot of these branches will get covered up, so I just want to make sure I'm making enough. Let's mix some color. What are we going to do for that? 
I'll take Lizard and Crimson. So I'm going to Thalo Blue. Since it's further away, I definitely want to lighten it up. So here's some white. Unfortunately, it's a little bit more to the blue side. So I'm definitely gonna add more crimson because that's how I want it. Seventy-five years later. I want a thorough mixture, so that's why I just keep picking it up and turning it over. One eternity later. Even more crimson. And even so, I'm gonna lighten that up. Yeah, that's the color I'm looking for. Okay. Swipe the knife off real quick. And I'm gonna take the round brush. I called it the oval brush last time. That was a mistake. That was not so much a happy accident. <laughs> Just gonna tap in there. Just get a lot of paint on the bristles. Okay, I'm gonna come over here. Just These trees are very full, if you notice when you actually look at them. They have a lot of leaves on them. And I like trees like that. They're just so full of life. Maybe a lot of it just comes out through there. You decide how full you want your cherry blossoms to be. Okay, and now what we're going to do is clean this brush off. Just gonna wipe it down, hold on. So we're gonna make those highlights here. Okay, just a moment. I'm gonna clean this brush because it's the only one I have the only round brush I have. And we will use it for later. My, my brush cleaning method will be another video, right? Because right now I'd be kind of boring just to show you what it is I do. And you know what, if you want, you can come back and redefine some of those branches you lost. Like this, watch. brown that's more out these trees are so full so full you can barely see any branches through there but you do want to see some
This one's just growing out towards here because the water's there. So maybe it's trying to get a drink or something. Now, I'm going to take our one inch brush, dip it into a little bit of liquid white. Liquid white, not the titanium white, not just yet. And go into our CAD red, just like that. We'll grab some white over up here, just to make it lighter. This red is very powerful. Maybe touch it. just gonna go up here various spots Grab even and just a little bit more liquid white. It's very easy to run out of this when you gotta make highlights. Maybe the color out here is a little lighter because there's more light coming this way, so. And there we go. That's the ones in the background that we're gonna have, so. Keep that brush right there. And now let's fix let's fix the hill here for a second. Alright. Now for here. We said I said I was gonna try a waterfall. I don't know how this is going to work out, but we're going to see. But before I do that, I'm just cleaning some knives. Hold on. I just want to distinguish a little land here first. We'll do that. So I'm going to take some of the, the Van Dyke Brown. Cross and let's figure out some land. This is going to help me distinguish where this water is actually going to flow. Is just straight, straight 
straight up Van Dyke brown. Actually, maybe I'll use the small knife. So we're getting into some tight territory over here. Clean the knife off. When we come back and add some highlights to the grass, it'll make more sense. And uh, before we even do that, I'm just gonna make some highlights for the for the land here. These rocks, so all these rocks and dirt. I'll just go into some uh, titanium white, make it a little lighter there. There you go. That's all you need. Just gently go across it. Start from the top here. Just work your way down. Okay, there we are. I'm just looking forward to putting this uh, this water in. Hold on. Kind of contaminated my white there, but it's all right. Let's uh, just try to figure out, yeah, let's just go like this and probably down like that, right? Okay, gonna go in again, some liquid white. Let's dip it in. Mix it with the titanium white now. And just maybe come down here, go down like that. Let's do it again. Go down like that. What you're doing is you're just dragging the fan brush across and going down. be a pretty big waterfall. Here we go. And here, just add some splashes.
And then maybe it's just making that water churn. And that's why we added some of the green into the, the blue here, because now we're making the water flow a little. If you don't have enough contrast in your color, you wouldn't be able to see that. Just goes all the way over there before we make some land over there. Okay. Now, let's go and add the land that's going to contrast with this, this water. Let me just fix this up a second. Okay, if you get some of that brown in, just throw it away. See? There we go. Back to our dirty brush for the grass and hills. some of that dark color. We're just gonna go here. Gonna be a pain to clean this brush out. There's so much paint on it. Just tap. I mean, already you have so many different shades of green and whatnot. It's pretty cool. Just tidy that up a bit.
I'm just going to make this hill come down a little bit more here. This nice grassy hill that just comes right over. Well, this brush is pretty dirty. Why don't we add those highlights? Okay, it's going to go into more of that liquid white or the rest of it that we had down here. Drag out the yellow. A little bit of yellow up there. All right, there's a lot of paint on that brush, let me tell you. Okay, now maybe here I won't have so much highlights because maybe there's, the, the trees have some shadow there. So, out here alone, and then here, a little bit more yellow ochre, and there we go, touch of red, just digging those highlights down here. By messing around with the color and the shades, you get your separators here. A little bit more cat red. Remember, I already had all that dark color and green on the brush. I did not wash it. in there. Step back and look at that. Oh, it's pretty good. Okay, so now we have those highlights on that side. We should make some over here, right? Maybe the top one will be the brightest. too much yellow there but that's all right just keep tapping it and working it in and no problem see in some spots when I was doing the base color, I made I made it dark here, so I'm gonna keep that. Oh, red. And there we go. See what that does. Nice hill. Right on over, maybe a little bit more sap green that I didn't touch. Just keep messing around with all these shades. 
be amazed what you could do with three colors, two colors even. If you didn't have that dark color underneath, you wouldn't even see it. Now, how about one more big cherry blossom? To do that, I'm gonna go a little, little overboard here, going to this dark Van Dyke brown color. Big knife. Now this paint's not really breaking off or sticking the way I want it. A mistake probably was maybe I used a little too much liquid white as a base coat, but that's okay. It's easily fixable. So here's what we're gonna do. Here's something I wanted to try. If you can't do it, there's always a way. There's always a way around it. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna wash this fan brush first. Get that brown all up in that fan brush, just like that. And it's gonna, nice and dark. Okay. It's okay if that's a little light there, because maybe that's where the light's coming from. Okay. I'm gonna make a few bigger ones over here. More distinguished, more distinguished cherry blossoms. So here we go. Maybe that just goes right off. Let me really thick to fix these edges up. There you go. See, we can fix anything. We can really work with anything here. Now, just like we did before, we can make all those all those branches and everything. Of course we have to thin our paint out first. Okay. Distinguish this a little bit better. Not even thinking about this too, you know, too much. I'm just letting that that this liner brush just flow and dance, just do its thing. Okay. 
since this is much closer to us, well, this is going to be so much bigger. Watch. Maybe there'll be a tiny little stick or twig down here. It's just growing out like that. Now, what did we do last time? Oh, that's right. We went with the oval brush, but we're gonna have this a little bit darker. We're gonna go into more lizard and crimson. Back to our purple color over here. So that phthalo blue, because this is closer. Use the rest of that crimson, why not? And we gotta lighten it up a little, so it will take that white. Just take this all the way to the top. Those trees are full, let me tell you. come down pretty far too. Back to our liner brush. So if we have branches that hang hang them down, we should have some. get covered up again, you know, when we do the highlights. So it really doesn't matter. Leave a comment down below. Tell me exactly what the name of these trees are. Are they dogwoods, cherry blossoms, something like that? Let's get a little crazy here and use a two-inch brush that we haven't used to fill all these highlights. We'll get it done a little quicker than that. All right, go a little liquid white. Just to that pink and red color we had. 
-hmm. This might be a little brighter because it's closer to us. Okay, here we go. Just kind of stamp the brush on there. That's really all you're doing. Don't try not to move it side to side or anything. I'm also kind of making a rounded edge as I do that with the brush. Pretty, right? Going to a little lighter color. I'm really liking those uh those white highlights too, and you can see them here a little better because this is closer. So we'll add some of that. Careful not to overdo and get carried away like I'm kind of doing right here, but maybe just one more right there. Okay. And there we go. Maybe can come back with the fan brush in a second. After we, oh, I'll just use a new one. Just sort of clean this up on the bottom. Maybe this goes back a little further, it'll make more sense. Last but not least, because we have a little bit more, we have some color here, we'll, uh, we will take more liquid white if I can find something that's not dirty to get it. One second. Gonna mix some of, some of that liquid white with the the Van Dyke brown. All right. So the last thing I'm gonna do. Watch. Take this filter brush. Thin out some the rest of our Van Dyke brown here. chunk of it right there on the other side we'll load up that light color and 
we just sort of go like this. Instantly we have some rocks in the water. And it makes a little bit more sense now. There we go. Then we can take the script liner brush into, and oh, we can use some liquid white, I guess. Add some of this water splashing by the rocks. And there we go. So those are our pink dogwood cherry blossom trees with a, a nice little waterfall. And I think we're done. What do you think, folks? Is it a great painting or what? How about new? No? All right, so we had some issues throughout this painting, but we got there. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like and subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any paintings. Until next time, keep your dreams high and your pompadours in the sky. Let's paint together. Reach the stars and make a way.